What is a two-point buck in? Why would I do a two-point buck in? I may want to check the flatness of the surface. I may want to check this edge to be straight. In order to do that, I need to make this laser plane parallel to two points, either on this surface or on this edge or both. And then I could check every point in between to see if there's any rises or, or hills or valleys, if you will, or any curves in the, in the edge, as long as these are parallel to two points on these surfaces. How do I do a two-point buck in? Well, first off, I'm going to set the target. I'm going to have two points on the surface that I'm going to identify. And normally I take a felt marker and make a, a footprint where I'm going to set this target. And I'm going to make this laser plane parallel to two points. The way I do that on the near point, I zero the readout. When I go to the far point, when I take it down here to the far point, then I tilt the laser beam in that direction. So it's zero. If, if I can get this close enough to the laser, if this was right up here, I could make this zero here, tilt this to zero, and I'd be parallel to the two points. But because that's usually not possible, I can't on a short surface, on a long surface, 50 feet long, 60 feet long, I can usually get this close enough that I can do this in one move. On a short surface like this, I usually can't get them close enough together. So I have a formula that I use. If I measure the distance from this laser beam to this target, and I call this L1, and I take the target down here and I measure the distance from the near point to the far point and call that L2, then we do the math. If L1 is 10% or greater of L2, then I'm going to use this remote formula. The remote formula, basically, I'm just going to calculate because from here to here, you see, when I change this laser line to this to be parallel to this surface, when I make this down here, there's quite a change here at this point. I'm going to predict what that change is by doing this formula and work to a set point. So I can usually do this in one move. So let's do this. If I measure this out, and I measure to the center of this post, to this pivot point here, OK? When I measure that out, I've got 8 inches. So I'm going to call L1 8 inches. Now L2, if I take it from here to my point down there, I'm at 47 inches. So if I divide 8 by 47, I get a multiplier of 0 0.1702. So here, I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to make this target 0 on this point. This is my near point. I always zero the readout on the near point. Okay, now I want to get my far reading. So I take this to the far point. And once again, I've made footprints. So when I go on each, each time I place the target here in the near point or the far point, I'm putting it in the exact same spot. So now my far reading is minus 63 thousandths. So I'm going to multiply that, my multiplier times minus 63 thousandths. And I get minus, Ten point seven thousandths. Multiply that times a negative one, I get a plus point ten ten thousandths and seven tenths. So now what I'm gonna do is just tilt this until I read my set point. So I tilt this to plus ten thousandths and seven tenths. Okay, bring this back to the near point. Plus 
plus ten thousandths and seven tenths. So now this laser beam, because they both read the same, this is parallel. I can make this zero. And I'll take it back down here just to double check. I'm zero down there. Now I can check anything in between here to see how flat this is. The last step that we do is make sure that the cross level is, has remained level. In this case, the roll level. The picture that way, we know this one isn't level because we tilted the laser to match this surface. But the roll way, or the cross level, we, we need to keep that level. <clears throat> so I'm gonna double check that. Yep, that looks good. The reason that we do that, if this plane happened to be tilted like this, we're tilting it this way to match this surface. But if this laser plane happened to be tilted this way, then if I, I don't keep this in a perfectly straight line, then I get a, a bad reading. So if this is level, then I can deviate a little bit from the straight line and I can maintain the accuracy. So this looks good. I'm gonna double check my zeros. I always like to double check so I, I know I'm accurate. Here I'm zero. Okay. Yep. And again, using the footprints, I always keep it on the footprints. And I'm zero there. So now I can check anything in between these points to see if it's flat. If it's high, I'll get a plus number. If it's low, I'll get a negative number. So. I'm going to move it here, and I have plus one thousandth. Come to the center. Plus seven tenths. Here. plus seven tenths, and double check. There I'm zero. So we can see this comes up a thousandth, and then it drops off a little bit, back down to seven tenths and then back to zero. So there's a little bit of a hill here. There's a little bit of a hill. So that is why we do a two-point bucket and how we do a two-point bucket.